In this video, we're going to be talking about the emission and absorption spectrum and what those can tell us about uh, atoms. So first of all, I like this name. I want to make a cool science name, but all the good ones are gone. <laughs> all right, so let's remember. This is just sort of basics we need to know about this. So remember that if an atom is excited, and what I mean by that is the electrons. So you can uh, do this with lots of things. You can do this with, for example, the lights that are in this room. You know, On the top, for example, there's a gas there, and you're applying a potential difference across it, and that's enough energy uh, in order to, for example, excite the electrons in those atoms. So for example, if an atom gets excited, then, uh, and I mean excited as in goes up in energy, uh, then the electrons in the atom, they move up in energy. So if this represents energy level in either, you know, electron volts or joules or whatever, then we could say that, okay, let's say they go up, for example, here. But then, of course, what's going to happen is they're going to drop down eventually. They could, for example, drop down like this. So maybe they go from this top level, maybe to the next one down. And what's special about it is every time that happens, so whenever it drops down, there's a photon, in other words, a little piece of light uh, that has energy, E equals HF, where F is the frequency, remember. So this is important. This is basically why, you know, the you know lamp, for example, that's up above me there, that's why it is actually bright. That's because, yes, you're exciting these electrons. Who cares? Well, we do care because when they drop down, it turns out they emit a photon of that energy, uh, that energy difference right there. So whatever that difference there was, that's the energy here. HF, F is the frequency. You can then use uh, V equals F lambda to find the wavelength if you wanted. So basically it tells you this is one color of a photon and different energy levels will have different colors. So let's look at what this means for us. So if we look at emission spectra, what is that? That's what we're just talking about here. This is just what's happening here. So you go up, you go down uh, in energy level, and then you emit a photon. So this is the process that's happening here. So again, just to draw it, so this here goes like this, let's say. Remember, it can drop down here, it can drop down all the way. Um, that's also possible. It might drop down from the top to the very bottom, and maybe it goes from the middle to the bottom, for example. And each of these ones going down, each of these has specific, you know, photon frequencies. So what's interesting about it is depending on which element you put in there, let's say you heat up hydrogen gas or helium or whatever, there's going to be a unique pattern. Okay, so only certain photons will be seen. And we say that this is going to be evidence for discrete atomic energy levels. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, the fact that you can only see certain photons, remember, photon, for example, of this one right here, or the one that was that one, or the one that was that one, they all have different energy differences. So that means they're going to have different energies of photons, and they're consequently different frequencies. So what that means then is that, yeah, that tells us something about discrete atomic, atomic energy levels. What do we mean by discrete? We mean they are quantized. In other words, they only come in countable amounts. For example, okay, so only certain values are allowed. That's because these electrons, for example, they can't just go halfway down. For example, if an electron is, is up here in that top energy level, it can't just be halfway and sit there. It has to either be up there or it's in the middle or it's in the bottom. It will not be found anywhere in the middle. That's what we mean by discrete. And that's very interesting. This is actually one of the basis of quantum mechanics. It sounds very fancy, but quantum just means an amount, a countable amount. So that's what we mean here is that the energy levels, they're not just anything. They're not continuous. It's only this value or only that value or only that value. Nothing in the middle is seen. Interesting. So this, for example, is what the hydrogen emission spectrum of, uh, looks like, for example. So if you heat up hydrogen gas, and this here would be wavelengths right here. So this is, for example, 656. So this is, you know, red-ish. Red this is bluish, like 400 nanometers. So, for example, this is the unique, you know, fingerprint, so to speak, of hydrogen. It's got these very specific emissions. And remember, those correspond to certain energy differences, and only those are allowed in hydrogen. For example, for sodium, it's got a bunch of other ones, but sodium, for example, Na, has these two really characteristic like double lines. They're really, really bright double line, like bang, bang. So what that means, what's interesting about it is every atom has a unique pattern of light. So in other words, this is what I mean by the pattern, this spectrum of it. That's because you take the light from this and you put it into a, either a prism or a diffraction grating. You basically split up the light so that way you can see its individual parts here. 
And the very fact that you see you see a black background because you don't see anything other than the places where these photons are being emitted. So it's a black background with colored lines. And depending on the pattern seen, you can tell what's there. And this is really useful, right? If you have an unknown atom, you know, if you could, uh, or an unknown gas, if you heat it up, for example, and you see the particular pattern, for example, this one, ooh, that's probably sodium. Ooh, this one's probably hydrogen and so on. It's like a fingerprint. So now let's look at the absorption spectrum. So what happens before? Remember, uh, here we were looking at emission, which is where, you know, these electrons are emitting photons. Now we've got something different where a gas can absorb a photon if it has the right energy. Again, if it matches these energy levels. So what does it mean to absorb? Well, first of all, I've got the same elements before, hydrogen and sodium, like I had before. Notice the emission spectrum was all black with colored lines where it's emitting those photons, but notice the pattern, and sodium has this double line. The absorption spectrum looks very similar, except it's got light everywhere. It's got a continuous spectrum of light here and here, and the only exception is you've got black lines which are corresponding to those uh, absorptions. So you can easily spot emission lines. Emission lines, again, are black with bright uh, lines. Absorption lines are, you know, bright light everywhere with black lines where they should be. And you notice the black lines are still in this sort of spot here. So we can put this all together. What do these actually tell us? I just put them, I just put a little diagram right here that helps us to see it again. So there's a hot gas putting through a, a diffraction grating, for example, gives you emission spectrum. Absorption, however, you have some sort of something warm, and then you've got the cold gas that's absorbing them. So then you can tell what this gas is actually made of. You can tell what the gas's composition is. So for example, these specific emission or absorption lines, you know, these discrete ones, that tells you about discrete atomic energy levels, that's true. But also the fact that the uh, unique pattern, so the fact that, you know, each element has its own unique, you know, signature, well, that tells you about chemical composition, that tells you what something's made of. Now, why should we care about that? Well, there's lots of cool stuff. First of all, if you do the uh, light from a star, for example, you can tell then what the star is made of. So we've even got different spectral classes. So depending on what the spectrum tells you, like where these absorption lines are, notice these are absorption lines because they're bright with black lines. Depending on which elements that we see, notice these ones here have more and more complicated elements seen in there. So sometimes it is a bit hard to tell. But we, you know, we know these in the lab, we know what each element is individually. So if we look at a big mess, we can say, ah, it's got that one and that one and that one and so on. So depending on what we see in the star, we can say then, uh, well, we can see what it's made of, which is really cool. So that's how we can know what a star is made of without actually going there. And also, what if we see these lines and they're shifted? So let's say you expect to see, like you, you see this characteristic pattern except the lines are all kind of moved all evenly. Do you notice like this, you know, bright one here has all been moved to the left. This double line here has been moved to the left. These ones here have been moved to the left and so on and so on. If everything's been shifted towards smaller wavelengths, we can say, hey, it's red shifted. And if you remember about Doppler effect, that tells them that thing is going away from you. And this is what we see in astronomy. This is a picture that I actually took at the Nordic Optical Telescope in the Canary Islands. Um, it's actually NGC 7479. This is actually an image that I did. Um, and do you notice that these red dots are here, all these red ones? This is actually a far away galaxy. It's millions of light years away. Okay, so it's a few mega light years away. And I was looking at how this thing spins at a very, very specific um, color. I wanted this transition at 656 nanometers. It's actually called hydrogen alpha. That's one of these main emissions. Do you notice this one right here? Uh, if we go back, see this one here at 656? This turns out it's got hydrogen alpha. You don't need to know that for the syllabus, but just so you know, we actually call it hydrogen alpha. Turns out something very special happens when new stars are born. They, be, you know, they, you can actually, they emit light at this hydrogen alpha, you know, this 656 nanometers. Here's the problem though, since this thing is so far away, hydrogen alpha lines, these 656 nanometers, are not seen at 656. The fact that this thing is so far away, they've been redshifted. So we first had to see how much it's been redshifted, and then we know where to look and where to move our filter to see this 656. Turns out it's even bigger. It was like, it's, I can't remember if it was like 700 nanometers or something. We had, to, we had to put our filter there in order to see this 656. It's kind of weird. But this basically tells you this is a you know this is where all the new stars are being born. And can you notice by the way the way it's spinning? It's spinning you know uh, clockwise like this. What's really interesting about it though? This thing has a 
black hole in the center of it is actually spinning the opposite way. And I couldn't quite figure out why that was. So maybe you're smart enough to tell me why, but I couldn't figure that out. <laughs> but there you go. That's science. Part of science is being confused. That's okay. All right, so let's uh, look at this. You can also do something even cooler. Exoplanets, this is something that's brand, brand new. These are brand new pictures right here that are coming out all the time from the James Webb Space Telescope. This will blow your mind, I think. So what if we happen to be lucky and we can see, uh, let's say we're staring at a star and we're lucky enough to see a planet go in front of it. It's called a transit. That actually happens. We've seen you know, a few thousand stars already that have planets in front of them. But what's interesting about it, if you happen to be lucky, you happen to be lined up where the planet goes in front of the star, yes, it'll dim the light. But what we can do now with really fancy telescopes is we can take a spectral analysis of that transit. What I mean by that is when that planet passes in front of the star, because remember, the star's light is so bright, otherwise you can't really take a picture of that planet. So what we do is we take lots of spectral uh, images of that star right as the planet's passing in front of it. And we look for these absorption spectrum. This can tell us that light from the star passed through the atmosphere of that planet. And we can then tell by those uh, absorption lines what it's made of. And for example, there's one called uh, uh, WASP-39b. Um, this is just the name of the star. Uh, a is the name of the star. B would be the name of the planet. They just call it this. They don't have cool names. They're named after the uh, survey that did it. This was WASP. So this uh, James Webb Space, Space Telescope is able to do really high frequency um, spectral analysis. Basically, they can tell what the atmosphere of this particular planet is made of. And can you see that? It's got carbon dioxide. It's got uh, lots of different things here. It's got some water signs, signatures. So what if, for example, we end up finding an atmosphere made lots of uh, oxygen or maybe lots of methane or something? That might tell us that, you know, this could easily be something that's alive that's on there. We're not quite sure. Isn't this exciting, though? Maybe one day we're going to detect, you know, an exoplanet that has uh, oxygen in it. You better believe we're going to be really excited about it. But so do you see how we can learn a lot just from this idea of emission and absorption spectra?